Boss Rush 700 Day 5. So this one's again not really a good farm day, so day 1 and day 3, all these different farming comps are going to be your, your go-to. But if you want to knock this one out, um, this one's a pretty simple fight. So we got Corrin Direbrew as the first boss, and then a little bit later we have to deal with Nazoth, who uh, is immune to artillery strike because of the passive with the Psychus add there. So uh, you just need a way to deal with Nazoth then. And this comp handles all of that. Um, you also have some flexibility here where you can cut one of these artillery strike mercenaries. Like I would probably cut Voon. Um, and you could bring like Malkazar or Medivh to make your Nazoth fight a little bit easier. You could also bring Belinda to ensure you have a freeze on turn one because this comp doesn't guarantee turn one if there's a mass hysteria and say your Varden or your Gin gets run into the Nazoth on the Hysteria hit and dies on turn one, then you could have some trouble there. But um, this is the basic comp is just Khadgar and Varden completely solved the first fight because he's got roots and then you have a cold snap on turn two. And then you're just hitting artillery strike and then you just have to deal with Nazoth. So the full comp here is going to be Bitter Chill, Band of Frost, Vilna and Strength, I'm using Scout Spyglass. That's pretty nice for cleaning up the Nazoth adds if you do need to use Rogers there. Dragon Rune Axe on Voon because these other ones are bugged and this is a pretty good equipment. Um, and then I'm using Primed Armaments on Eudora because if you ever do throw Eudora out against Nazoth, you'll have some zero attack cannons to soak up some of those Hysteria hits. And also Covering Fire to protect some of your guys from uh, bad things happening. So that's one another option with this comp when you fight Nazoth is you can lead with Eudora. If Eudora doesn't die, um, you, you, which you have higher odds of with the cannons in play, you get to summon two cannons right at the start of the fight. Um, so that'll reduce your odds of a bad hysteria outcome. And then on turn two, you can bounce somebody with covering fire and then try to get a more ideal comp out to fight the boss. Um, and again, you could cut like Voon and um, bring either Midi or uh i guess malkazar is a good one you just have to protect malkazar for the first two turns so you can land all realities on nazoth and you have to clear out those adds with an aoe attack so that uh, nazoth gets hit by the malkazar all realities if you do hit the frost ritual on varden it's an auto win on nazoth because you can just perma freeze and nazoth will never get to act um i see arrival is also pretty nice because you'll get to skip turn one and uh, from there, you should have a pretty easy time. You, you can't completely lock out Nazoth, but Nazoth, or, uh, Varden does get a cold snap every other turn for free because the spawns get summoned every turn, and Varden's snap is faster than Nazoth, and then you have Ice Lance every third turn. But there are some gaps where you won't have a freeze with this comp, so you could either bring something else to fill those gaps or... Uh, just hope that it's good enough, because I, I ran this and it worked fine, even without hitting any great treasures, but um, there are ways to make it more guaranteed. You could also bring, like, Nimzy for Can't Touch This, which is another win condition. So you have a lot of different options, and there's a lot of flexibility with the party, but the only essentials are Cadgar and Varden with this comp. So basically you just root on turn one and then you snap on turn two and then from there you have infinite roots. And as far as I've seen, he always summons this Grim Patron. So as long as you have at least 20 base damage on your cold snap, should be good. Okay, now we just hearth fire and snap and they should always be slow enough. You can get out some summons if you want, or not. You can just keep shooting at Corrin for some crits. But from here, they don't do anything because you just root them with Khadgar. You also don't need Khadgar. He's not, like, especially good at, um... At fighting Nazoth. So, you could kill Khadgar for better treasure odds. And then just use Varden and Gin are basically the core of fighting Nazoth. 
Uh, but he's not bad to leave alive. Um, he can give you some health with Hearthfire. He does get Frost Ramp from Varden. So, um, they're not summoning anything this turn, or you could go for a Cold Snap. I'm just going to do a Flurry instead. If you do a Cold Snap, though, you need to not Blizzard with uh, Khadgar on those turns. And this one got slowed, so it's going to be too slow. Uh, this would do 480, so it would. I could snap off this. I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Just do a hearth fire here. A really easy fight goes pretty fast with all the frost ramp. Actually, whatever. I don't even care if they attack or not. <laughs> So we just need to hit an artillery strike here. I don't really have a plan to fight um, Bane Hollow. So if we miss artillery strike, we're just sad and restart. Um, I guess don't take the Wind Fury because you don't want to Hysteria Wind Fury. I would like to hit Band of Frost, or uh, not Band of Frost, uh, Frost Ritual. That gives you the guaranteed win. Nice. So if you do hit this, you auto win. Um, out of these, if you already have the artillery strike covered, um, probably the regenerating is good. Um, this won't activate frost ritual because it's not a targeted ability. So that's not especially useful. Um, so here, since we already have an artillery strike here on Eudora. I could just take that. So Nazoth is really slow with all their abilities. So you basically just need anyone that can use a targeted attack slower than, or at four speed or slower after you Frost Ritual. And then this should be an auto win. Um, so Voon can do that every turn at 4 speed. Um, Gin can do that with his Space Maker, or just using his, I guess the 2 speed's too fast, so yeah, he'd have to use his Space Maker. And then I'm going to use Cadgar just to benefit from the Frost Ramp. Um, none of these should really matter. So I guess Voon does the most. So I don't actually know if the worms, they should, when they're summoned, it should activate the frost ritual when they swing, but I'm not even positive since it's that actual summon with a charge and it might not consider the charge like a targeted attack, even though you do have to select a target for it. Um, so I'll test that here and we'll see if that activates the frost ritual. I'm just gonna get Khadgar transformed. But an axe throw every turn would guarantee a freeze. You can also snap um, anytime that's available. That's a guaranteed freeze as well. I wanted to test this. Uh... I don't want to do it this turn because it's uh, kind of risky. We'll test it like next turn or in a future turn. Because if he didn't get frozen and then I get locked out, I replay Varden, but they can't ex act next turn. Uh, that might not be good, so we can do it this turn, though. So you'll be able to tell if it activates because you'll see the uh, animation play on Varden for the Band of Frost. You'll see a little, like, Frost rune appear over Varden if it actually does an additional freeze, even though it should be frozen from the Archmage Nova first. So you saw that little Frost rune there. 
And is there another one? There is not. So, good to know if you Frost Ritual and then you summon an Evasive Worm, that will not give you an additional freeze. So don't make that mistake and uh, end up in trouble. Also, if you wanted to, instead of benefiting from the Frost by just casting Blizzards, if you wanted Cadgar to be able to freeze, you have to not transform him because he doesn't have any four speed targeted, four speed or slower targeted attacks. Once he transforms, everything's two speed or faster, or it's untargeted. So you have to leave him untransformed and spam the Arcane Surge at six speed. So you can never cast Hearthfire if you want um, Cadgar to be able to activate a, a, a Frost Ritual freeze. Otherwise, you can just use your uh, Boon or someone else to do it. And the melee attack from the worm, though, should freeze. I'm just not attacking here. So that I get the extra... Boon shots. I guess it's probably better to attack and just get the frost ramp. The Frost Ramp will be worth more than these extra dots from uh, Boon. So you'll see here when each of these worms attacks, it will activate the Band of Frost here. It's just that initial attack when they're first summoned doesn't count. And of course you can flurry, so that should do it. Oh, well, <laughs> I forgot about the adds. I should have AoE'd with Cadgar first. So yeah, don't make that mistake. I guess since I did that, I don't want my Varden to die next turn. So I'm going to um, use Gin. And Eudora here, and because I get a Hysteria since I made a mistake there. And it should be safe. I think it's safe to put Varden out, but I can just wait. I'm gonna do it this way. Also, your positioning matters for Hysteria. I believe it goes in play order um, for the attacks. So if you make a if you make a taunt summon, the taunt will eat the attacks from uh, Hysteria before the Hysteria starts hitting other things. So um, you want to put your guys with lower attack towards the left, so that the lower attack guys hit into the taunts. And then the higher attack guys finally finish the taunt off. Because if I put this Varden early since their attack is ramped, it would um, it would end up killing the taunt. And then these other hits could potentially hit into Nazoth or higher attack allies or whatever. So you, you want that taunt to block all of the swings if possible. So you kind of want to order your guys low to high attack. I'm just going to summon an additional cannon here. Uh, actually, I'm going to bounce my Eudora. So by putting Eudora out here, I am exposing my only Artillery Strike Mercenary to potential death here uh, if there had been a Hysteria. So I was always planning to just covering fire my own Eudora so that I ensured I didn't lose my Artillery Strike. And that's why I was thinking about maybe not playing Varden here. Since Varden can't act this turn anyway, and then I would be able to bring Varden out after the Eudora bounce. But this will be fine. We must band together, 
Okay, so this guy's only 5 speed, so I have lots of options to kill him. And then this time we AoE'd first, so this flurry will kill Nazoth. So that's what I should have just done the other turn, but... Anyways... Doesn't really matter what we take here since we already have an artillery. And you definitely don't want to have to fight this last boss, so... <laughs> artillery, or I guess Celestial Protection, is going to be the way to go since these Prison Warders with high attack uh, and all the shadow damage for that Undead Anixia fight are very difficult to deal with, and you have all the randomness from the book. So, artillery is certainly the way to go on that one. And it, even if you did Celestials, if you had a high Celestial protection, that uh, the randomness from the Babbling Book could still get you at the end. Consume your guys or whatever. A pretty quick run, the, the first boss is very quick and easy, especially if you've got a good Band of Frost on your Varden. And then it's just a little bit of a grind to get through Nazoth, and you could speed that up if you wanted to by bringing, say, a Malkazar or something like that, if you wanted to try to end the fight quickly. Good luck!